Now we are going to discuss E, exposure and pretty much everything else. ICU can be daunting and the focus may initially appear to be purely on the technology and equipment. The ICU team, however, provides some of the most basic nursing care in an acute hospital and it is everybody's responsibility to assist the patients to remain nutritionally optimised and as clean and comfortable as possible. Muscle strength and intact skin aid effective rehabilitation and safer ward transfer. Nutrition. A nutritional screening should be undertaken and recorded with a tool such as the Malnutrition Universal Screening Tool, or MUST. In ICU, our philosophy is to feed early. If a patient is awake and be can be assisted to eat and drink, fantastic. If the patient is extubated and able to eat or drink, assess the need for assistance and provide any help required. Invasive lines and even air mattresses restrict mobility. A helping hand may be all that's needed. If possible, get patients out of bed for meal times. ICU have access to a small kitchen facility with beakers, etc., to promote independence and can order meals from the canteen. Patients just extubated following prolonged intubation or following tracheostomy will require a swallow assessment prior to eating or drinking either nurse-led or by the ICU speech and language therapy team per local availability or policy. Usually, however, the enteral route is first line by either nasogastric or jejunal feeding tube, or NGT. NGT insertion can be one of the most difficult procedures to achieve in the critically ill ventilated patient. For this reason, it is vitally important to assess the patient's NGT tubes, position and placement checks per local policy, usually at the start of every shift or following transfer off unit, for example. The tube position should be noted, compared with the insertion position length and documented in centimetres at the start of your shift. If in doubt, stop the feed to reduce the risk of aspiration and seek help. Ensure the NG tube is well secured to prevent migration. If in doubt, change the adhesive holder. The pH may be misleading in ICU patients as feed is often continuous. Aspirate gastric contents every six hours and replace or discard in line with local policy. Motility agents may be prescribed to assist absorption. Check the rate and type of feed. NG feed prescriptions are used based on body weight and calorie or electrolyte needs. NG feed may be slowly increased over a few days when there is risk of refeeding syndrome. Electrolytes plus magnesium and phosphate replacement will often be prescribed in tandem with clear parameters for you. Check when the giving set is due to be changed, usually every 24 hours. Label new lines with the date and time when changed. Total parenteral nutrition, or TPN, will be instigated if enteral feeding cannot be established. TPN bags will be provided from pharmacy. You need to ensure there is enough for the weekend. TPN is given by a long line, for example, pick or centrally, and has a dedicated lumen, the circuit is not broken to give other medications. TPN is lipid-based and requires strict asepsis when changing lines and bags. Label new lines with the date and time when changed. 